we've touched upon the development of artificial intelligence. Um, I'm slightly obsessed with the metaverse uh, at the moment. I, I'm very excited about it. I think it's going to uh, present some real opportunities, but risks also. Um, it seems to me that what underpins a lot of the risks, particularly in the future, around how we protect our data is that identity has become so um, unclear. I don't feel that the social media companies and big tech got this right at the outset. I think it's an unintended consequence of the speed that they moved. We're in a situation where, as, the, as it stands now, somebody, a criminal, can very, uh, um, in a very authentic looking way, can clone people's social media accounts, can produce imagery of them, can access personal details, can intervene in, in, in business transactions and of course personal transactions like banking. Now, as we move towards artificial intelligence, where it's possible people might have dual identities. It's, you know, in, in, the, in the metaverse, we may have a virtual identity, which will be an avatar. And then obviously we have our physical identity in the physical world. What I'm saying there is identity of, is, if anything, becoming more diverse and more wide ranging. How do you see, what, what needs to happen, do you think, to mean that we get this right now to prevent the issue of, data crime, cyber security breaches getting worse in the future? That's a fully loaded question. Yeah, <laughs> if what you got the to answer happen? to it, we can get you in with Mark Zuckerberg <laughs> and all that. Or. I would love to meet yeah. Elon and Mark. Yeah. My goodness, I have a few things to say. <laughs> Probably days worth of things to say. <laughs> um, however, I don't think that, I don't think we have it right just yet because- no. AI is still developing like wildfire. Blockchain technology is still being uh, developed. I mean, blockchain technology is quite old, actually. Yes. It was just the, we just got the rush in the last three years purely because of, I believe, the, the pandemic and everyone was kind of, you know, researching it a lot then. Yeah. Uh, so I believe that those two uh, types of technologies are still in their infancy. Uh, though... When we were when we spoke a few weeks ago, we were talking about the advent of fake and real. Yes, and I think that that's what we're dealing with in society. We are fake and real, and it's not even just like uh, technology and authentication, for instance, or, or when you're trying to you know online your online personality and you've got this other persona offline. You know, you look two different people like, as two different people. For instance, like you said, you've got this avatar or you're identified by a string of keys because of your blockchain uh, or, wallet, for I, instance. I suppose just things like filters as well. I was just about to say, you've you've got all these filters and, you know, on social media in, and, you know, that's really crazy. That's like kind of, you know, gone again. It's spread like wildfire. Mm. So how do you, I'm not really sure. I'm not sure how we can, it would be that we would slow it down. Yes. So I think with that said, it kind of comes into another another area that I, that I look into, which I didn't touch on, and that's privacy by design. And that's getting in before the tech's actually developed. That's getting in, you've got your legal teams or your data protection teams or your privacy teams sitting with your infra security teams and sitting with your your product engineers, your, you know, UX, your UI designers and your actual engineers, your software developers, and you're all in a room and the, the, the developers say, hey, what do you think? How can we do this? And all together, people will apply their critical thinking caps and they say, right, this is what we believe. So again, it's privacy by design. So the whole, again, I say privacy by design because privacy is really all about uh, access to, to the data and, you know, who's who essentially. But that's just the, core, the term that we, that we call it. But it's really just about developing the product in alignment with thinking about these fundamental principles of, you know, who is who. Yes. Of cybersecurity principles. Because they're all we've, we've spoken about so many different principles, not just data protection principles, but cybersecurity principles. Okay, so it's really about looking at all of you know both areas and saying, okay, how do we develop to develop a product that actually can encompass these principles but still be innovative? And you can do it. I've worked with so many clients 
who do it. So uh, you were going to say something? All I was going to say is, let's use the Pope in his puffer jacket example. <laughs> Looked so convincing, but using our common sense, we could work out that it, it probably wasn't real. Yeah. yeah. However... There, there could be instances where a deep fake is thrown up which says, for example, that one country has invaded another or which says that one country is um, turning um, law against a certain type of people within the country that could be much more persuasive. People could think that's happening. It's real. There's Ooh. a war on. And it yeah. strikes me that the artificial intelligence is that good that we almost, we're in a situation where we, we might need a way in which, you know, some form of verification of all content that we experience and all data that we receive, which we just know is genuine. Like what what uh, Elon's done with Twitter. With the, with the well, blue, that's blue an interesting tits. one. I would say that's a great example of it. I wonder if mm. it goes far enough. It I don't think it doesn't go far enough. You, you, well, you think to yourself, don't you? If if the only gateway is paying, what is it? Seven quid a month? Is it? Or I think it's, it's eight month? dollars. So it's like eight seven, dollars, seven, seven quid a month. Quid, yeah. So you think to yourself, if that's the only barrier to entry, well, with the limitless access that bad actors have throughout the world, they're going to pay seven pound a month, aren't they, for fake profiles that they get the blue tick on? And imagine that, if anything, could get them access to doing even worse things if everyone takes that as a verification of them being real. You 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 touched upon another point there about uh, information being spread in the media, okay? Yeah. And I'm largely a proponent of using your critical thinking to really understand, actually, did it really happen or didn't, didn't happen? Uh, I'm not going to go into other areas that I believe were, you know, made up for, for certain parts of, of particular companies yeah. or, or uh, industries, for instance, to, to appease the, the needs and the, the pockets of certain individuals and, and, and companies. It's not the platform for that. But I will touch on uh, the fact that the best way to control society is to put out you know, certain pieces of information and then people start to actually, it spreads. And then people start to believe in something that may not necessarily be real. Mm. Now, going towards the law and and looking at um, deep fakes, it's illegal to impersonate someone already. Every country has laws in place that don't allow you to use someone else's works that, that's been, for instance, copyrighted. That's true. You can't steal something like, you know, something like that uh, or their works, uh, as I was saying. You can't impersonate someone when you're not them. That's every single country has that a law of that kind, some more advanced than others, some that there's harsher penalties than others. Yeah. Every country has that in the world. Yeah. So it's a matter of how do we tighten that up? D detection and enforcement, isn't it? Yeah. And like you said, is the blue tick enough? And, you know, sorry, the payment for the verification badge, is that enough? Uh, I think that there are so many different ways, but you really bring up something. I don't think we have the answer yet. I really only, don't. Do you know what? The, I mean, I was thinking about could we have like the equivalent of a digital watermark? You know when you get, a, you, you know when you get like a 20 quid note or a 50 mm. pound note and you've got your watermark in the note and that is very difficult or maybe impossible to, 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 to fake. I was thinking you could have something like that, but if if that isn't an answer, I think what Elon Musk is looking at in terms of a neurological aspect to do identity verification, I can't think of a better one than that. And that brings to play a whole range of ethical and physical considerations. But I think what we're agreed on, I think what most people would, would agree on, is that in a situation where law firms are being faced not only with the risks prevented by misuse and breaches of data and the legislation now, that really we've got to come together as perhaps as a society, but particularly in terms of big tech, to crack this issue of identity once and for all, because if we don't, the risks are going to get worse. Absolutely. And I think, again, it's a going back to the, the lawyer who sent the money. Yeah. 
it's it's an education thing as well. It's a cultural shift. Why do people want to be fake? Mm. Why do people want to get online and bully other people? Why do you want two different personas? For me, that would be so exhausting. Like yes. I couldn't think of anything worse than being two different people. Oh, no, <laughs> like, awesome. Imagine Terrible. trying to like hold up some identity online and then hold up some identity in, in person. And, and you know, there have been people to, to be found that they've had three identities online or, or one person, you know, or, or, or they're dressing differently. And uh, so what I'm – to hide their identity, that is, not for other reasons. Uh, so, again, it's also a cultural shift. It is. What – again – it comes up with where does it stem from? Probably tra trauma. What? Well, that's the thing. What's the what's the drivers in the um, quest to be unauthentic? It, and I yeah. think it seems it seems to me that it's 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 the um, it's the drive for money. It's the drive for beauty. It's the drive for status. For status, absolutely. And you're right to say that. Tech might provide some of the solutions to those, but it's not the only solutions. It's no. about what we stand for as 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 a people, yeah. I think. It's are you in your integrity as well? I, I and I always start with this point, you know, you, you're in business to do what? So, you know, going back to the whole overarching reason why we're here is you know, on, on this on this podcast is you know, we're doing business essentially and you need to protect the data, for instance. But yes. you need to understand before you even get into anything is what are your values and your 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 principles? What's your purpose? Exactly. Yeah. And then it goes into individual purpose, you know. So it's like, okay, if you have that, if you know who you are, if you are being authentic, then do you really feel that you will go and bully someone else or call someone else out online in a negative way? There are so many ways to do certain things. So I, I think that it's you know, uh, education, it's uh, looking, ch changing of culture, it's privacy by design might be the wrong word, but what I mean is, you know, designing the actual technology to have the principles, you know, data protection, infrastructure, security, cybersecurity, for instance, interlaced with the way that it's, the pro you know, the tech is designed. And then it's looking at how can we verify? Is taking a photo and uploading the photo of your ID, which might be fake, and normal? taking a photo, of, you know, like this, is this is this real, you know? So it, is that type of verification? So it's going into all of those areas. I think that we are on the, uh, the cusp of change, though, as a society. I think society is really going back to its roots, though. 